Paul says in verse 4 that love is patient and love is kind. So I want us to talk about that as we move forward with the properties. And what, is, what does Paul mean by saying that love is kind? What is the meaning of kind? Kind means the way we treat others. A manner, the manner in which we treat others. It has an aspect of softness and gentleness. One has a few. So when Paul says love is kind, it means that uh, we sh love treats with a, an aspect of softness and gentleness. Sometimes kindness takes the form of careful rebuke. It doesn't mean that when you are kind, you cannot rebuke or you cannot confront. But it is, it takes, sometimes it takes the form of careful. And mostly when you do that kindly, the, the, the aim is to bring out good results. You are not just rebuking someone for the sake of showing them to be bad people. So, for example, how we can learn about love being kind, we can see it in Paul himself, in the way he dealt with the Corinthian church. If you read the letters that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, you will see that there is rebuke in it, there is ashness in it. Paul is, sometimes you read and you can feel some, some level of anger. But Paul is doing it kindly, one as a few. One as a few. The other example where we learn how to rebuke kindly is by Jesus in Luke chapter 13, verse 15 to 17. So Jesus rebuked kindly the, 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 uh, the, the Pharisees. And he told them, you, you are hypocrites because you are not doing the right thing. Why don't you want people to be healed? They are suffering. So look at yourself, check yourself. Do you normally rebuke others kindly? Do you normally rebuke others kindly? Let us move to the next, which is uh, love does not envy. Another property of love in First Corinthians chapter 13. Love does not envy. What is envy? Let me start by, by saying what envy is not. Envy is not admiring something or a quality in a person or desiring many of the same for oneself. That is not envy. Because we admire each other all the time. One has a few. And there is no problem in admiring each other and admiring some qualities some people have. That is not envy. Sometimes you see something or you see someone some qualities in a person and they, they are attractive, they are good, they are desirable. So envy is not admiring. But now, where envy comes in is when that desire turns into resentment. When you start hating on that person because maybe they are better than you in, in, in speaking, they are better than you in praying. Envy starts coming in when your admiration turns into kuchukia uyo mtu ama kujichukia wewe mwenyewe. That is the problem. Otherwise, plain admiration and leaving it to God kama atakubariki siku moja and maybe going ahead to do what it takes to get there. There's no problem there. Lakini kianza kwamba ikuwe ni chuki. Ama ikuwe ni unasikia vibaya. Ukiona huyo mtu kwa sababu wako na ability kukuliko. Ama kwa sababu wako na qualities yenye iko bora kukuliko. That is the bad thing. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 8. Do not uh, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit. But with humility of mind, regard one another is more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, um, uh, taking the form of a bond servant, 
and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient, uh, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. If you have the attitude of Christ, of humility, and putting others before you, one as if you, you will never cross that red line of being envious. In church, if you want to see love, people do not envy one another. They support one another gladly. Hallelujah. They say, oh, this guy is good in this. Let's give him room to lead us there. Not just being hateful and being con con uh, contemptuous of others. Let's go to another property of love. That is, uh, it does not boast. So it means bragging without foundation. Kuji, kuji skia bila msingi yeyote. Unajisikia tubu, yani there is no justification for you to brag that way. But this doesn't mean that we should not celebrate what God has done through us. It's, it doesn't strip us of celebrating the achievements of God. Rather, it means that we should not exalt ourselves over others. You can celebrate your achievements without bragging. You don't load it over others. Huh? How are you dressing, my friend? You know? So, um, that is what Paul is meaning here. But it, it doesn't say that we should not celebrate our achievements. And then another property, I think now we are in, we are still in verse 2, the part E or, or D. Love is not proud. Love is not proud. To be proud is to be overly self-confident or insubordinate to God and others. Love is not proud. Overconfidence and being insubordinate, you don't recognize the authority of God. You don't recognize the position of God. That is being insubordinate. When one cares about other people, he does not find himself of great self-importance or become arrogant. When you love others, you will not get to that point. You will value, you will celebrate everyone, you will, you will encourage everyone. But also, let us not hate ourselves. Let us avoid both extremes. Love is moderate. We have a, love is not, when we get to verse 5, love is not rude. Rudeness nitofauti kwa kila culture. There's something that is rude in your culture, which is not rude in another culture. So rudeness, kuna kitu inaitua kwa kingereza, is relative. It depends where you are. But generally, when we talk about rudeness, we are talking about disregard of social customs that, are, that others have adopted. So love is not rude. But again, let us avoid also the extreme of adopting things that are ungodly. One has you. I'm not saying that because you, want, you don't want to be rude, you, fo you follow along with everything that is being done. There are things you will judge by God's wisdom and say this is not right. But also how you approach it matters. Sometimes you have to leave that place completely. So that is what Paul is saying. Love is not rude. Let us accommodate. Let us learn one another. Let us learn what is, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in the context we are in as believers. Love is not self-seeking. Still in verse 5. Love is not self-seeking. This means the practice of always putting yourself first or in the first place without due consideration of others. As believers, we are always presented with this challenge to choose between what benefits others and what benefits ourselves alone. We must always put others before us, one as if you. Before, before we insist on something that you want to be done or what you are saying, consider if it is good for everyone. If some people are, are, are not agreeing, can we find a middle ground? Can we consider the concerns of everyone? The loving person puts the benefit of others uh, over his own, or his own good. Let's see the examples in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 15. 